Welcome to the Plant-Based Podcast. Did you know that plants are truly amazing? Not only can you grow them and eat them, you can also wear them, drink them, nourish your skin with them, and so much more. Let Ellen and Michael inspire you to love plants as much as they do, as they chat with the movers and shakers in this wonderful plant-based world. So, let's dig in. Hey guys, this is the final um, edition of the Plant Geeks podcast, which is a kind of mini podcast that we've used as summer specials on the Plant Based podcast. So it's a kind of podcast within a podcast, like Inception. Is that like Inception? I always say that. I'm not sure what the word actually means, though. Never mind. So this week, we're talking all about cactus and succulents. Isn't that cool? And I think for many of us, What was the first plant that you grew? I think most people would answer, a cactus or a succulent. For me, it was sedum jelly beans, which is this really fun little plant, which basically does look like jelly beans. So, of course, succulents are so fun for kids because they often look like other things and they kind of got this real personality to them and they're really collectible as well. I've been really, really fortunate to have spent the weekend at the British Cactus and Succulent Society's Cactus World Live. I was asked to be a speaker there, but to be honest, I actually turned them down almost twice before because I was worried it would be a lot of kind of cactus experts and I would walk in there with all my kind of fresh new ideas and not know how to grow a cactus and they would laugh me out of the place. But actually, that's the reason they wanted me there. (laughs) So I could add, not so I could get laughed out of the place, but so I could add that kind of different angle to things and kind of thinking of things differently and I went in and talked about some different cactus arrangements um, which you can see on my Instagram which look pretty racy and not something you necessarily do at home but it's a great way to get people interested and get their interest peaked as well that is peaked with an IQUE by the way um, yeah so I did that I I told them I don't know how to grow cacti and succulent the best way. You know, I'm just going to come here and do the kind of inspiration. And that is, that's what they were looking for. So I talked about outdoor cactus, hardy cactus, hardy succulents as well. Mangava, we looked at Instagram, different places to get inspiration as well. So it was really, really fun. And I'm really glad I said yes in the end. Also, I had a great look around RHS Blue or not Blue Water, Bridgewater. <laughs> Remember, this podcast is unedited, so this is really warts and all. Bridgewater, oh my gosh, it's amazing. The planting is just out of this world. Rudbeckia maxima is, oh my gosh, it's an amazing plant. It's about eight feet tall. Bearing in mind I'm 6'2", it is just, I'm going to plant one in my front garden because if the neighbours are shocked by the weeds they'll sure as hell be shocked by Rebecca Maxima. So yeah, have a look on my Instagram and you'll see those there as well. But I might as well hand it over to the interviews. So there's two different interviews. We've got Ian Fwaites, who is the chairman of the BCSS. He's um, really great. He's been in the Garden Media Guild. That's where I first met him uh, for many years. He's also been part of the society for many years. And he would, uh, how would he describe himself? Maybe as old school, but also he's got a great progressive attitude. I think he actually called himself an old fart. I, I hope he did, and I haven't got that wrong. But, um, but yeah, so he's kind of like got this kind of old school attitude, but actually very open to new ideas, etc. And then you've got Joe, Joe Adderley, who is a really great woman, and she's coming into the Cactus Society kind of a little bit fresher. She hasn't been interested in plants for quite as long, but... Oh my gosh, she is amazing. She's such, I don't want to say breath of fresh air. That's such a horrible thing to say, isn't it? But she's just a whirlwind of organisation. She's really progressive as well with her ideas. And I find that 
Ian and Joe make the perfect partnership when it comes to really bringing the society forward into kind of the future because now it's it's at a crossroads and it still needs to cater for the kind of old school audience in inverted commas but it also needs to cater for the newer audience that are coming kind of via Instagram and all of these different channels where not only is there a really different attitude but also people are used to getting their content for free. So would they then pay to join a society? So anyway, I'm going to hand it over to Ian and Joe because I've gobbled on far too long. But I hope you like this slightly different Plant Geeks podcast where we actually go even deeper and we talk to actual societies as well. So maybe in the future we'll do some more of these. So I I hope you've enjoyed these summer specials. If you want to hear more specific Plant Geek podcast kind of episodes where we talk about certain plants in more detail, then let me know. Send a comment. Uh, leave a five-star review. That would be a great way to let me know. But equally, if you want myself or Ellen and I to talk to more of the societies as well and kind of get behind the covers there, then let me know because all ideas are gratefully accepted. But anyway, I'm recording this intro just laying on my bed in my Primarian on a Monday afternoon. There you go. Life of a freelancer. Enjoy. Okay, I'm here at a really, really cool event today, which is all about cacti and succulents. It's at the new RHS Bridgewater Garden, and I'm here with Ian Thwaites. I was very nervous about saying that because I can't do the TH, so Ian Thwaites, do you want to introduce yourself? (laughs) Hello, I'm Ian (laughs) Thwaites. And you are from the British Cacti and Succulent Society, and you are the chairman, and you've really helped to put a together an amazing event here today and we've had lots of different talks we've got loads of different cactus sales as well and you're really you're really trying to shake up a kind of quite old school society because you've now got to appeal to you know the older members but also bring in the new blood as well so have you been enjoying the role how you how long you been involved with the society Oh, I've been a member of the society for more years than I care to remember <laughs> uh, I joined it was a joint I joined with my mother Oh, really? And we had a joint hobby and interest because yeah. um, I'll talk about that more perhaps later on, but uh, I've been in the hobby in the society since the 70s. Uh-huh. But I just wanted to bring the society and the hobby up to date. I don't want to change anything. Mm. I just want to add the new dimension, yeah. the, the enthusiasm and the love of new of plants and the colours and the shapes and the forms. Mm. Um, which is something we tend to forget if we just keep on looking at the labels. Mm, Totally. And there's such, like, your ideas are pretty progressive. I really enjoy seeing that. And, you know, there is a new audience that is out there ready to embrace, you know, cacti and succulents. And, and, you know, we've got Instagram to thank for that, whether we like it or not, haven't we? Oh, yes, we have. (laughs) And it's becoming popular to have a plant and actually grow it. It's not Mm. seen as sissy or mm. something that's strange. Did you have that when you were a kid as well? I think... Like me? Yes. Yeah, yeah people yeah, yeah. seem to think you were a bit strange growing plants. <laughs> it's weird because now it's the trendy thing. And I, I personally, I go between being pleased, annoyed, amazed. <laughs> I find it strange but wonderful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like Leicester University give all their freshers a little cactus. Oh, really? Because they say a home is not a home. Without that's a, really without cool. I didn't know that. Wow, that's a really nice idea. Yeah. And it's one that won't die as well. Yes, exactly. It's easy <laughs> mm. to look after. Although probably most people would overwater them, wouldn't they? Because <laughs> a lot of people kill plants with kindness, we have to admit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about you, right? From when you were young, when did you grow your first cactus? And how did you get so enveloped in cactus? My mum always had plants on the windowsill. Mm-hmm. And... She always had a few cacti, and when you used to go shopping with her, every now and again we'd go into Woolworths with the two shillings or two six and buy that little cactus that Woolworths always used to sell. And I just got into the habit of enjoying growing plants. Mm. And I used to buy my mum a plant, walk to the garden centre on my own, Mm -hmm. and buy her a geranium for her birthday. Wow, that's and cool. it was always nice to buy something. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I had the same with my grandma. Yeah, my parents weren't so interested in gardening. Yeah, it was yeah. really grandparents. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was actually something that I could give to my mother that would 
develop as a present. Mm. It wasn't like a box of chocolates. I always mm-hmm. thought. So that's where your cactus collection started. Yeah. And what, which plant did you have first? I probably had a little Prashna robata, the mother yeah. tree. Uh-huh. And I've still got a piece from the original oh, plant. From the original. Oh, yeah. that's cool. And <laughs> it reminds me of my mum, who's yeah. lost and passed, unfortunately. But it was a shared hobby. Mm-hmm. And then the, when I was 18 and working in London, I, I came home to Lincolnshire where my mother was worth living. And I saw there was a sign up for a cactus show, and I said to my mum, "Let's mm-hmm. go to the cactus show." Yeah. <laughs> and we went, and we both joined up, and it became a shared hobby. And I put the greenhouse up in her garden. Yeah. Oh, and, and this we, was the British Cactus and Succulent Society. So, yeah. as a eighteen-year-old, yeah. I was very untrendy. I actually <laughs> went out with my mum as a pleasure. <laughs> well, me too. Yeah, and my grandma. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. <laughs> so then, you didn't take a career in plants at that point, then. No, you work in a very different industry. I, I went into the financial industry mm-hmm. and progressed through various streams there. Okay. Um, but I still used to go home to look at my collection mm. on weekends. Which was mum. growing by that point, I'm sure. Oh, it was, yeah. yes. <laughs> How many plants you got now? I've you... got two greenhouses. Yeah. I didn't have to slim down after my mother died and I had to shrink down sizes. Yeah. But I've got two 12-foot greenhouses, so, and they to the rafters with plants. I know, it's, I asked you earlier and you said, I said 500, you're like, mm, yeah, probably more. So it's yeah. more than 500 at least. I would think, yes. I bet your wife knows how many. <laughs> or at least not another one. <laughs> My wife's not really interested in plants and she doesn't particularly like house plants. So oh, really? <laughs> we, we have a, an interesting relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my partner's not really into plants, but at the same time, he's not going to stop stop me having them, I guess. No, but, no, she doesn't stop yeah. me having them. Yeah, although I often I'm putting them on his desk and then he's often like, there's too many plants around here. It's like, it'll help you work better, you know? Yeah, that's it, exactly, <laughs> exactly, yeah. But does it take much work then having that many plants or because they're cacti and succulents, is that easier to maintain? I think kindness kills more plants, so mm, you can leave yeah. them longer if you miss them watching yeah. them for a while. Well, they'll let you know, won't they? You can tell when a plant needs a bit of water, and, and if you're wise and observant, you can get it before it's obviously too late, or exactly. even sooner than exactly. that, you know. But I've, yeah. I've probably got too many plants, and I am trying to thin them down slightly so mm-hmm. that I can appreciate more mm. what I've got. Mm-hmm. I used to be a typical collector and wanting to have more and more and more. Mm-hmm. And now I want to have quality, quality, quality. So. <laughs> so you're working in the city and then you were kind of almost a career change, I guess, because then you're doing garden photography for a few years. It was. Right? I, I decided yeah. that I was fed up with the rat race of the financial services. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a point where my children were old enough that they weren't quite so dependent on me. Mm-hmm. I decided, I told my wife that I'd have a gap, yeah. a gap period of life. So I, I went Did you buy a Porsche? <laughs> I didn't quite buy a Porsche, no. But, uh, I went out and I, I'd always been a very, very keen photographer. So I just decided to go out and do mm-hmm. plant photography. Wow, that's cool. I've and done, you've been doing that for a while now, right? I've been doing yeah. that for a while. I've yeah. done quite well, so I'm very pleased. Yeah. And obviously become more prominent in the B, BCSS as well. Yes, I stood for office four years ago because yeah. um, it's a wonderful society, but I thought that they were just stagnating and mm. I felt that we needed to get out there mm-hmm. and attract and, and shout the word about how much fun mm-hmm. it is to grow plants. Yeah, but it's always hard to bring together that old world and the newer audience because almost like I see this so many times in all areas of horticulture, the old school want new people but when the new people are there, they're kind of like, oh, no, you're not doing that right. How, do, how on earth do we ever lubricate that and get it right? Well, I try and work on the basis of grandfather, grandson, granddaughter, mm-hmm. or, you know, grandparents, grandchild, because that always works well. The grandparents always seem to be able to relate to the grandchildren better. Mm. And mm. I'm trying to bring people together yeah. with different yeah. views. And so far it's working because they've both got the passion. Yeah, that well, was the same for me, learning with my grandma. And it was, like, your parents almost are too busy. They haven't necessarily got time sure. or you kind of don't connect in the same way as you do with a grandparent. So oh, that's really interesting. You're trying to bring that element into the society in yes. some way. Yeah, 
Uh-huh. So get the people together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And rather than have meeting after meeting after meeting in a stuffy church hall, mm. I want people to talk to each other more mm-hmm. and swap plants. There's nothing yeah. better than swapping a plant. Uh, and use technology as well, because like we've just been here and there's been a Zoom from Chile yes. looking at plants on a hilltop. Yes. Isn't that amazing? I think it, it was fascinating. I loved it. There's things that have come out of the pandemic which have made the world better. Definitely. Zoom and yeah. making the world smaller. Yeah. And we can do talks online now, so you yeah. don't have to sit in a darkened hall. Don't you wonder why we didn't do it before? Yes. Seems weird do. now, doesn't it? It yeah. does, yes. Because I've attended talks from, you know, US, US garden designers, and previously I would have had to travel there, you know. Yeah. It's just amazing what's changed. Absolutely wonderful. Ah. Absolutely wonderful opportunities. So, kind of the future of the BCSS, um, how do you see that? You see, do you think you've got some new members this weekend, for example? We have had new yeah. people signing up. I, I want, the BCSS, for some reason, has been a very male mm-hmm. hobby. And I want it to diversify it. And I mm. want to have younger people in. I want boys and girls. Mm-hmm. I want everybody to come in and enjoy it. Mm. And I also want to make it a family event. So, yeah. At our event today, we had pot painting for kiddies. Yeah, that's cool. We had pot up a plant, put it in the soil, put the soil in, (laughs) and take it away for free. Because children that learn how to grow something, that's one of the greatest pleasures in life. Definitely, and I think it's no coincidence that the first plants that we both grew were succulents, you know? Exactly. And that says a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Wow. Oh, thank you so much for being on the podcast today, Ian. It's a pleasure. Yeah, as I said, this is a special edition through the summer. It's kind of like the mini Plant Geeks podcast. So, yeah, thank you. And it's great to chat about cactus a little bit more, and especially the event here today, and the society where people can find out more online and hopefully be inspired to join up. Well, I I was so pleased that you could make it today. Oh, thank you. It's been really fun. And I was... I was nervous because I came here not as an expert at all and I was just coming here to inspire people and hope, hopefully we've done the job. So. I think you have. You've done yeah. a great job oh, for us. Thank cool. You. Thanks, Ian. See you soon. Bye, <laughs>
Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. I was given some mature plants um, to care for. And As a just... gift, or because they were retiring, or uh, retiring. Okay, I guess yeah. There's a lot of old collections that need homes. Oh, sometimes. there are a lot of old collections that need <gasps> homes. We're really desperate for homes for uh-huh. cacti sometimes. Oh wow! Do you advertise them through the society, or how does it work? Um, sometimes, generally, they would go to the person in charge of a branch, the mm. local branch, and then they would. Um, share them amongst other branch okay. members or new members normally mm. that's how they get you hooked you see they give you a small yeah, yeah of course <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> so how many have you got at home now big and small i like the big ones yeah um so we've probably got half a dozen really large cactus mm-hmm. i also like the really small ones so there's um there's a few species that only grow small. They'll be old, but they stay tiny. Oh, right. And I love those as well. Yeah. So I go from the really big ferrocactus to the really tiny turbinocarpus. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, so have you grown some from seed? We oh. have grown a lot from seed. When I was a kid, growing from seed, cactus is just amazing. Mm. Yeah. Such a cool experience. And they're so quick to come up, but then they're so slow to I know. produce anything I know. that looks like a I've cactus. got one at home at the moment, and it's just like doing nothing. It's just like, <laughs> hurry up. <laughs> yes, yeah. And then, you know, know you'll blink and in a couple of years time it'll be huge mm. so. i loved watching them kind of reach that adolescence yeah. kind of where the little spikes then become older and yeah. harder and more dangerous yes. as time goes by as well oh wow yeah. and the the event here today then there's lots of different vendors with cactus isn't there yeah which is working really well isn't it yeah we 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 always get a good mix of um stall holders of traders that come to these kind of events and mm-hmm. some of them are really specialist yeah, in the plants yeah. that they grow and sell and and so, and some of them can sell more generic plants mm-hmm. that, that that are also really really interesting but i gotta say the prices are really good yeah for the plants it's really and, amazing and that's another thing of being in the hobby so those are the prices we're used to seeing as, mm. as hobbyists trading together and selling in small <laughs> events really this is probably one of the first events that we've ever done um where we've really traded to the public to be okay, honest really yeah oh. i would say so uh-huh. yeah. so you might have gone in too cheap <laughs> I mean, possibly, yeah. I don't know. I just look at some of those and I'm like, the skill behind it to grow it and the knowledge that you're getting, I think you could easily be a little bit more premium. Yeah, yeah. and the years they take to get yeah. even to those small sizes. Oh. Yeah. And the people that have been through the doors here today will have been existing members. Yeah. But also new people that were perhaps at Bridgewater today and they yeah. just stumbled into a cactus show how have they found it absolutely i mean they, they've loved it i was just chatting to a, a yeah. couple in there that literally exactly that they just come to wow. the gardens they'd seen the marquee they came in and yeah they bought a couple of cactus wow. and succulents from in there and they couldn't be happier so you've seen a lot of di- different demographics as a well lot. Yeah, yeah a lot one of the um things that we wanted to do here at rhs bridgewater was to engage with children mm-hmm. because you know it's summer holidays there's going to be a lot of families coming through so we did pot painting mm. And to see the children um, painting their pots, and it gives the parents a bit of breathing space, yeah, maybe to go and have a look. That's a really at the good cactus. idea. And it's just really engaging with the children; oh, wow. they're loving it. So you've seen a real mixed demographic. Kind of when we think about the society, do you have a mixed demographic within the society? I know you're looking to improve that all the time, but is it is it fairly blended? Um, <sighs> We have got quite an aged demographic within mm. the society. Our members are definitely getting older. Mm-hmm. Um, we are maybe because of that struggling to attract younger members mm-hmm. um, because the needs are so different yeah. of what we both want. Um, so, yeah, it's been really difficult, but we desperately, desperately need younger people to come and join mm-hmm. us and learn the skills that these guys yeah. have to offer. And that's part of what this weekend has been about, yeah, hasn't it? How, how do you think we can attract younger people to these kind of specialist societies not just cacti and succulents but also when you look at say the delphinium society or the sweet pea society what what benefit would they get from joining a society oh i mean just the knowledge that you gain Mm. from being part of this wider society and the friendship Mm. you know that's one thing that i've really missed during lockdown Mm -hmm. that the people who are who are socialized with i love learning about the plants but i've really missed the people and the community of it all yeah they really missed us as well Mm. um yeah and swapping plants and just learning new skills and and just yeah, mixing with different people yeah. that you wouldn't normally mix with. And you might you might kind of sit there and think all that information's on the internet, but 
Maybe not accurately. And like when you're yeah. randomly watching a YouTube video about how to graft a cactus, is that better than, you know, someone showing you in real life? Oh, you, know? um, yeah. you could watch a hundred um, YouTube videos about yeah, grafting yeah. and still never get the Yeah, it's kind it. of sterilizing it a yeah, bit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, grafting is so much fun in real life. Mm. And, and, and you need to learn all of the little bits and pieces. Yeah, that... there's some amazing grafted ones in there. Yeah. On the on the top row, there's a guy in there that he's selling for like five pound each. They're yeah. incredible. I might yeah. buy loads. Of yeah. I just love them. Yeah. Oh, my God. And it's also understanding the need for grafted cactus. A lot of people mm. don't yeah. like the look of the grafted mm. cactus, and I'm one of those. But for conservation, yeah. the ability to graft a cactus is so vital. Yeah. Well, it's really interesting. He was saying because he's in Lancashire, which is quite wet in the winter, kind of wet atmosphere, that he needs to do that for those to survive, yeah. basically. So yeah. Yeah, he's given them a much well. better base, yeah. which was really interesting. Yeah. But also they grow a lot quicker when they're grafted, so they might flower a lot younger. Uh -huh. They might provide multiple heads so that you okay. can reproduce them a lot quicker. So in conservation, it's uh, a really, really important skill to have. It's funny. What what gave grafting a bad name? Was it those gymnocalyceums yes. with that? But, but why? Because... <laughs> that's so ugly. And well, because yeah, they don't but, last... Uh, yeah, true. They true. don't last the, the, because they're grafted to help them survive with that colouring, isn't it? Um, is initially, case? but yeah. the, the the match isn't completely right. Uh -huh. So the gymnocalyceum does have a habit of um, becoming ungrafted mm -hmm. to the stock plant, and it can't survive. So on what its is own. a better graft for those? Then? Oh, I couldn't tell you to be honest. Uh -huh. But I wonder why that hasn't become commercial. And but I guess um, because I guess if we're honest, they're seen as throwaway plants anyway, absolutely. aren't they? It's Which is stock. not right, but yeah. no. The stock plant grows so quickly that that's why that one's used. Mm, it's really interesting. In our uh, talk recent, um, just today, we were talking about there's a lot of emotion attached to plants because you know we look at. Um, certain plants and they've got very short lifespans and we kind of you know the ones that are sprayed like the glittery yeah, yes, ones and such yeah. there's such a kind of snobbishness about that but like that's because we want a plant to last forever and we kind of get quite attached to it and yeah. we know those glittery plants might not always survive but then if that is the gateway to somebody buying a new plant or a young person or, you know, anyone, then is that such a bad thing? And also, I said in the presentation, I was like, you're never going to stop it. This is a big commercial exercise, you know. Absolutely. Let's just make sure that what uh, they're sprayed with is, you know, as sustainable or eco as possible. Yeah. That's all we can do, really. Absolutely. Yeah. I totally yeah. agree. I love a cactus with a Santa hat on and <gasps> <laughs> My God, go and wash your mouth out. <laughs> oh, no. So do I, by the way. <laughs> I like to rescue them. Oh. I like to see what they become, what they grow up into. That's cool. But it was um, Ian who we're also interviewing. He he said that they're often the the hats are stuck on with a spike through yeah. the middle, which is maybe That's not good. ideal. But no. then. But that plant will still live with a spike in the middle. I know it's not ideal, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, it'll recover. Sometimes spikes plant, um, plants spike each other, so... Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a great divider of people. <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a really oh, emotive subject. Definitely. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Joe. Thank you so much for chatting to me about cactus and succulents no. today. It's really fun. And this is going to be part of our summer specials on the Plant Based Podcast, which is a kind of mini Plant Geeks podcast all through the summer. So, yeah, okay. hope you enjoy it. And, yeah same time next year yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> cool see you thank you see you The music for the Plump Based podcast is part of the song Grow by Mikey James. And our editor is Gareth Patch of Semi-Echo. 